Hi, my name is Nancy Lowe and I teach scientific illustration and nature journaling. Today I'm going to share with you some simple techniques that can help you feel more comfortable making drawings in the field or using virtual field trips such as the ones on thevirtualfield.org. The point of these exercises is not to become expert at making drawings or produce beautiful drawings, although you'll find that as you draw more, you will become better at it. But the point of these exercises is really to make you a better observer. You'll find that as you're drawing, spending so much time looking at something, you'll start to think of questions about why something is the way it is. And um, think about the relationship of structures that you see to the functions that they might perform, and also how those structures might have arisen in relationship to other species, to the habitat in general, to abiotic factors like temperature, salinity, precipitation, and ask yourself some questions while you're drawing. I hope you enjoy these little drawing exercises and that you have a great time with thevirtualfield.org. Thanks. You can use really simple materials. A spiral bound notebook or blank book works best. This one's mixed media so that you can use it with watercolor later if you want to. And you can use these portrait style or landscape style. Um, this slightly smaller one has perforated pages so you can pull out the pages later if you'd like to. And this smaller one would fit even in something as small as a pocket. A number two pencil with a clean eraser is just fine, but you can use a drawing pencil like these here. A kneaded eraser comes in very handy because you can squeeze it and shape it into a point or a wedge to create a shape when you erase the graphite off the paper. These paper blenders are really nice for blending the graphite, but you can also use a paper towel that's been rolled up really tightly. Micron pens are great, but you can also just use a ballpoint pen, and you'll need some kind of a sharpener. When I go out in the field, I like to create a grab-and-go kit that just has a few simple materials, and then I can just grab it and go. Before you start your drawing, it really helps to do a blind contour exercise to really increase your attention. You want to choose something that just has amorphous shapes, not something you can name like a leaf or a fish. And then the trick is you want to look at the image but not at your paper. It's hard not to cheat, but you just want to look very closely at the image and very slowly move your pencil along the contours like a little ant crawling very slowly along each innie and outie. So here's the line I was drawing. And when you're done, it's going to look a little bit like you drew it with your left foot. It's an odd image, but the point is not to make a beautiful drawing. The point is to increase your attention. You can start by looking for basic geometrical shapes, like these berries, which are basically modified spheres. Another thing that you can do is use one unit as a way to measure other units, like using a berry to measure how far it is from one object to the next. It's half a berry distance from this one to that one, or it's three berries wide from here to there. And here's another one where I'm looking at these stems as cylinders, and I'm noticing that the shape of the cylinder is kind of curved in certain places, and just sort of notice where that basic shape like a cylinder starts to vary a little bit from what's a straight cylinder. Here I'm making a correction to a smaller stem, a smaller cylinder, and realizing that this line needs to be a little bit more zigzagged than I had made it originally. So you just keep looking for basic shapes and then how do the things that you're seeing vary from a basic shape like a cylinder or a sphere. Even things that seem like they are simple lines have a shape to them. So here I'm drawing some thorns on a cactus. And you'll notice that at first it looks like they're just lines, but really they have a dimension. They have a shape to them. They are very thin, narrow cones. 
So while you're drawing these shapes, you might ask yourself, what is the origin of this shape and what is its purpose? For example, these leaves that are flat are not entirely flat. They are modified planes. They have a curve to them. And the shape of this leaf also has a point to the tip. So while you're drawing these shapes and just looking at the areas of light and dark to make the drawing, you might ask yourself also, what is the purpose of that shape? So you've been watching me create light and shadow with a pencil, but now I wanna talk a little bit more about what I'm doing with the light and shadow. I'm using graphite pencil here to create areas of light and dark, and I go back in with my stump or blender to blend some of that graphite in and make it a little bit more of a soft transition from light to dark. You can also use a paper towel that's really tightly wrapped up. And while I'm doing this, I can also remove some of the graphite with the kneaded eraser. That's one of the nice tricks that that tool will allow you to do. But if you don't have a kneaded eraser, you can also um, use a regular eraser to do that. So here I'm just blending these darks so that they have sort of a soft edge to them. And as I work, I'm looking at the original photograph and sort of comparing what's the darkest area in the photograph and what's the lightest area. Among all these berries, uh, one of the darkest areas is a berry that's kind of hiding in the back. So I'm making that a, a darker area. This is another berry that's hiding in the back. So I'm making it darker. And by the way, one of the tips that you can use is even if you don't see something in the back being darker, put, making it darker will push it backwards. Lighter um, shapes tend to pop out and darker shapes tend to go back, tend to recede. So I just continue using my graphite pencil and the blender to sort of make these uh, soft edges and noticing that the light is coming from the top and I have mostly light areas on the tops of the berries and darker areas on the bottom. Now I'm going in and making some sort of wrinkly looking berries. These are the ones that are sort of shriveled in the photograph and um, kind of going back in and um, filling in some of the other shapes that I'm seeing. So how do you translate light on form from graphite to pen? Well, there are a few techniques you can use. This is called hatching, where you're making marks in a single direction. You can also do cross hatching, where you're making marks in a slightly different direction to add even more tone in that area. The example on the left is only using hatching, where you're making marks in between and the one in the middle is using cross hatching. And this one is called stippling. When you're stippling, you're basically just making dots, almost like pointillism. And you wanna go in and start making your dots kind of evenly all over the entire surface so that you get kind of a general tone. And then you go back in and create some in-betweens in the areas where you see blank areas and then you just keep going back in and darkening the areas that are dark by adding even more layers of dots in the areas that are the darkest. So to review, hatching uses marks in the same direction, cross hatching goes in a different direction, scribbles just kind of go all around, and stipples are just dots and you see how I'm laying them down in triangles that helps me to avoid making any kind of pattern, um, like a line or a spiral. Also, you wanna make sure that your pen goes directly up and down so that you can avoid making hairs. So you don't want little hairs, unless that's what you want. When you have a surface that's highly reflective, like this leaf, what you wanna do is create a high contrast between the dark areas and the light areas. 
So I've used my blender some on this leaf, but now I'm going in and darkening the dark areas. And I'll go in and use my kneaded eraser to pull out some of the graphite in places that I want to be white. By the way, you can clean a kneaded eraser by just sort of pulling on it like silly putty and find a clean area. So I've made a little edge with my kneaded eraser, a little point or a, or a, a sharp edge so that I can go in and pull the highlights back out. And then I go back in with a pencil and darken the places where the shadows are. So on this leaf, instead of uh, having the, the lights and darks blended, in this leaf I'm using much sharper differences between really dark areas and really light areas to create sharp highlights. Sometimes you have repeating patterns of hundreds of little things that need to be repeated, like this moss. And so one shortcut is to draw the structures really specifically in the foreground, which is towards the bottom. And then as you work your way back, in the background you can make things that are just a little bit more of a suggestion that are kind of a shortcut. So the moss gametophytes in the foreground here are really specific and the ones in the back are just little tiny hatch marks. Again with the sporophyte of this moss I'm making a few of the spore bearing capsules but in the background I'm just sort of assuming that your eye will kind of fill it in and make it look like there are spore capsules on all of those vertical lines.